Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Sort of for our first year, we'll easily be in the seven figures. I think by year two, we'll easily be in the eight figures. And by year three, we'll definitely be in the nine, if not more. Wow. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, from Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Sati Coscarella, CEO of TAT Global Alternatives. How are you doing today, Sati? Awesome, Rich. Always happy to be here. Super excited to have you on the show today, and a huge event happened this weekend. Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul, and TAT was at the event. It was. And I heard through the grapevine that this was your idea. How did this go about? Well, listen, I, I get presented with a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, now that we've kind of established a bit of a reputation and brand for ourselves, uh, a lot of properties come to us and say, hey, would you be interested in maybe participating? And when this one came, I thought that it was a no-brainer, right? I mean, it's probably the biggest fight of the year thus far. I knew that there were going to be a ton of eyeballs on it. And we just sort of went back and forth with uh, the money team and put together a deal that I thought was, you know, in the best interest of both parties. And I got to tell you, they were just a, nothing but an absolute pleasure to work with. Wow. Very accommodating, um, and I think they did a tremendous job in terms of helping to bring Tat to their audience. I mean, that ad that uh, Floyd put up on his Instagram was viewed uh, four million times. Wow. So he did an Instagram stories and an Instagram post four million times in less than thirty-six hours. Wow! Incredible. I mean, our, our Instagram following tripled overnight. Wow! And we had well over ten thousand new visitors to the site within. 24 hours or less. It wow. was just an insane amount of traffic, a lot of people interested in the product, wanting to sample the product, and I think it really fits in with what our strategy is, right? I mean, when you have smokers, I think the best thing to do at first is just give them, give them the product, let them try it. And then we know that after they try it, they'll want to buy it. I mean, even here, I mean, I can tell you that, you know, for a couple of the people that have let sample the product, I'll get calls within three days. Do you have any more? Can you have me some more? Like, don't worry, we'll be in Canada soon enough. But um, I mean, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. I'm, I'm very pleased with kind of how far we've come in, in a relatively short period of time. I mean, when we first spoke, what, less than a year ago, if I told you that I'd be sponsoring Floyd Mayweather's next fight, I don't think you would have believed me, right? Yeah, I, I, I still, I can't believe it. I mean, it was, sur it was surreal, like watching them walk down the aisle and they're wearing the hats. I'm like, this is crazy. How many people are like going to see Like Floyd Mayweather this? holding up a carton of tat on his Instagram? Yeah. Like and, 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 and doing multiple posts, mm -hmm. like multiple posts. And I'm like, this is super cool. This is only going to be able to help enhance the brand, give you more visibility on a global scale. So I thought it was great. I thought it was a really smart, outside-the-box idea. Congratulations on the success of well, that promotion. Well, thank you very much. And I think one of the other great things that comes from it is it opens us up to a lot of other sponsorship opportunities that'll be interesting for the brand. You know, when you sponsor uh, an athlete and a celebrity the caliber of Floyd Mayweather, it lets a lot of other properties and celebrities know that we're serious. And on the back of that, we've started getting a lot of inbounds. I've gotten inbounds from Premier League teams in the UK. Wow. I've gotten inbounds from other boxing promotions, other fighters. Uh, mixed martial artists, NASCAR, I mean it was literally a, a wealth of opportunity that's coming in now. So, you know, we're taking the time to kind of go through all of these things and see wh what makes sense, but I think it was a, a tremendous win for us. And, and again, I, I'd work with Floyd and, and his team any day of the week. They were nothing but utmostly professional. Yeah, he's definitely Floyd Money Mayweather. He knows how to make money. A hundred million dollars for the event. Um, yeah, he did okay. Yeah, he did okay. And, and Jake Paul did pretty good too. $20 million just to show up. And, Listen, you know. man, it, 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 <laughs> I don't know how that guy made it through eight rounds with, with Floyd, but to his credit, he, he did it. So Yeah, I think you know people have to give him a little bit more credit. So this makes me think about the next fight. So there's mm -hmm. another fight coming. Jake Paul, his brother, against Tyrone Woodley yeah. in August. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to be looking to sponsor someone there? Well, they came after we sponsored this fight, so we'll take a look and see how that uh, might materialize. And who knows, maybe you'll see uh, a few more people walking out with some tat hats. That would be super cool. That would be super cool. Yeah. Now, not only are you guys doing all kinds of outside-the-box thinking with uh, the fight and the boxing, 
but you guys are also doing some advertising with the bull riders. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that's going? Because I think there's an event coming up. Yep, there's an event coming up uh, in Vegas this weekend. Oh, perfect. So I think that that's really great. Uh, you know, that was another sort of event that, or another property that came to us uh, through one of the relationships that I had, and I thought that it was a really interesting one for us to participate in. I mean, I, you know, coming from Philip Morris, I always knew that Cowboys did a pretty good job selling cigarettes, so <laughs> we decided to sponsor a whole army of them. <laughs> it's like back-to-back -back events, weekend after weekend. Yeah. So we got a chance to see how you did that with Floyd. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you guys going to be doing at this event? How are you going to be getting in front of the audience? So one of the things that we're looking at doing is obviously having some signage within the event. Uh, there's a tack qualified ride, so when oh, nice. the bull rider hits uh, the, the requisite amount of time on the bull, then fog machines go off and it's a tack qualified ride, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, That's super and cool. at all of the events uh, where possible, we'll look to do sampling. So uh, many of these events will set up smoking sections not within the venue, but outside. And we want to be able to put people into those smoking sections so that when somebody goes out and has a cigarette, we can at least introduce them to the product, hand them a sample pack, they can try it, and then give them all the information they need that if they like it, you know, here's where you can buy it. And whenever we've done that, we've found that it's, it's an overwhelmingly successful campaign. And smokers, once they're introduced to the product and try it, they really like it. So Absolutely, you know, absolutely. It's, it's a bit of a hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of uh, initiative, but I know it works. So those are the kind of things that we look to engage with. You guys have had so much success. It's only been a year. I keep reminding myself, it was a year ago, almost to the day, that TAP and Rich TV Live became this marriage. And since then, over the last year, TAT's been a huge success. It's been like one of our favorite stocks for our community. So many members love TAT. When I went live before this interview today, um, and I was asking questions, people were just flooding me with questions and flooding me with questions. And one of the questions is about the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. Why the NASDAQ? I know you guys announced that you want to get on the NASDAQ. Why did you choose the NASDAQ? Well, um, I think it, it makes a lot of sense for us. Um, I can tell you that the process is going well so far. I mean, it's Great. been pretty smooth sailing. Like We've been going back and forth. Obviously, they're going to have certain questions. We're putting together all the answers, and it's pretty standard stuff. So. No real bumps in the road, and, and hopefully, it, you know, it kind of continues that way, and sort of see smooth sailing ahead. Uh, you know, when I think about the Nasdaq, I remember because I watch a couple of your videos, right? I yeah. Go, I'll watch them after, and then I'll go into the comment section sometimes just to see what people say. And oftentimes, you get people that come in and say, "Oh, I can't find that on Robinhood. I can't find that on Robinhood." And then, to your credit, you're always first one in. You know, try TD Ameritrade, try this brokerage, try this brokerage. Now. You know, it's, it's challenging for somebody to go open up a brand new broker just to trade one stock when they can otherwise trade whatever they want on Robinhood. So I think moving it over to the NASDAQ will definitely open it up to that pool of investors. So now, once you get onto the NASDAQ, all those people that are on Robinhood that have heard about it, that want to buy it, will have a much easier time being able to buy it. And you can kind of take a look in the market now and see what happens when that happens. You know, what was it today, AEMD? That's right. Right. AMD was up like over 400% at one point. Right. What were they trading at yesterday? A few bucks and they were over $10. One day. That's right. Right. That's the power of what going to the NASDAQ can do. MindMet was the same thing. That's right. Right. The second they announced, I think they got a 100% pop. Oh, yeah. And yeah. within three days, the first day of trading was 61 million shares. So, I mean, there's no secret. If you can get onto that premium exchange, it just opens you up to a whole new world of potential investors, and I think that this story sells extraordinarily well to this audience, right? I mean, the, the business that we're building, the market that we're going after, I mean, the the blue sky that you know we're chasing is just extraordinary, and when you can open it up to that mass of people that at least have the ability to go in, do some due diligence, and you know if they like what they see, they can go in and buy it easily, it's a no-brainer, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting to see everything evolving, and let's talk about that. So. You guys have started off in Ohio. Mm -hmm. What's next? Well, one of the things that we're looking to do now is expand our own uh, in-house sales team to kind of work alongside Crossmark, kind of put some dedicated people on the ground. So uh, we're building the team internally as well. Uh, I think we'll be expanding a lot more into Ohio, but in addition to that, uh, we started hiring sales reps in Illinois. Wow. We've got some distributors nice. now going in Georgia. Obviously, we're going to be expanding out through Nevada, 
And I think you saw that we had a press release where we got our first distributor in the UK and Ireland. That's right. So now we're in the process of uh, fulfilling that order. What we had to do over there is uh, amend the packaging a bit because the UK has different packaging requirements than, than the US. So we had to kind of do a bit of a redesign on the pack, make sure that we had everything in place. And we're just in the process of fulfilling their first order. And you know, before this ever came to be, we sent them sample product because the distributors wanted to see it, taste it, smell it, you know, try it. And they sent it out to buyers. They sent it out to consumers. And within a week, they were banging down our doors saying, wow. how much can you send us? That's great. Yeah. And on the back of that deal, we're now starting to talk to almost every other country in Europe. We've wow. probably got about 10 to 12 countries lined up, uh, ready to go. So, you know, as we start getting the, our feet underneath us in, in Europe, or in, in the UK, I think the rest of Europe is, is very short to follow. So, I mean, it's been way faster than I thought it was going to be, but, I mean, the demand for a product like this, after we've sent samples and after they sent it out to stores and after those stores have sort of tested it with consumers, that they're coming back and saying, how fast can you get us this product? It's just, you know, insane. But, it's uh, been it's quite surreal. It's almost like your guys' timing to market couldn't be more perfect. You go to market with a product that has no tobacco, no nicotine, mm -hmm. and then months later, Biden says he's got a mandate to reduce nicotine levels in cigarettes. Yep. Yeah. What does that mental. mean for TAP? Yeah. What does that mean? Like That is just huge, right? Listen, I think it's, it's an enormous opportunity for us because if that, if that happens, that you reduce the nicotine concentration in cigarettes doesn't mean that people are going to quit smoking. That's right. Okay. What you've effectively done is put people in a worse state of withdrawal. If they're still going to be smoking these lower nicotine cigarettes, they're just going to be smoking more, which will likely piss them off. So if that were to happen, and I think eventually it will, they're going to look for viable alternatives. And if they put nicotine caps on cigarettes, you can rest assured they're going to put nicotine caps on vapes. Hmm. Right? They're not going to do one without the other. Of course. Because they're already looking at marrying these two things. That's why the vapes now have to go through the same process that cigarettes have to go through in order to get approved to be sold in the U.S. Okay? So, that he does that, I think it just creates an enormous opportunity for TAP because we can satiate that nicotine withdrawal in a way that a low nicotine cigarette has no ability to do whatsoever. Absolutely. Makes so much sense. So, I think that you know when smokers are presented with that kind of an option and they have the ability to try TAT and get sort of the, the satiation and satisfaction they're otherwise looking for that they're never going to be able to get in a cigarette anymore at a price point that's going to be cheaper than any of these cigarettes, what are you going to choose? I just feel like at that point in time, maybe, you, maybe it's already happening, you're going to have Philip Morris knocking on your door, you're going to have Altria knocking on your door saying, guys, we need you now more than ever. Well, I can't tell you how many people, you know, some of my former colleagues from Philip Morris called me after they saw that sponsorship and like, how the hell did you do that? Because we can't do that. I'm like, I know you can't do that, but I can. And I did. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, the online sales, mm -hmm. how has that been so far? Listen, I think the online sales are good. I mean, but the online portal for me really is an exercise in uh, pack in hand, right? It's a way for consumers to try the product where we can collect a lot of the information and then turn those potential consumers into actual consumers, right? It's, it's challenging to kind of tell somebody, buy this product. I mean, how many e-com sites are available now? Millions. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> do you buy from all of them? No, you can't. Right? But, but you should. I, I'll tell you. Go buy it. It doesn't work that way. So you have to put together this thing called a consumer journey where you want people initiated into the brand, you want them understanding what the product is, you want them trying the product, and then for the ones that like it, then you give them an easy way to go and buy it. So I think for the e-com strategy, that's really the area that I want to be able to focus on to build that database of potential consumers and then convert them into actual consumers. Um, also, I think that if you think about how you know a smoker operates, if I want a pack of cigarettes, I don't want to wait three days for it because I can walk 30 seconds in any direction and buy a pack of cigarettes. Of course. Right? So I think the, the e-com is a great way to introduce the brand to potentially new consumers 
And what that also does is it helps us figure out where to go to next. Because if you see a lot of groundswell coming in from particular areas, go in and start putting it in store. Because I think for tobacco or tobacco-like products, like, like what that is, the brick and mortar is never going to go away. That's going to be the primary channel, and that's where you're going to want to sort of make sure that you have the product. And I think when you kind of work these two strategies together, it really helps kind of create a, a very quick acceleration for the product. When you think about Juul, right? When, when Juul was, was first commercializing, they literally had people walking up and down the street handing out starter packs for free. Right? Anybody that would take it, they would give it to them. So that's one of the things that we're also looking at building out, and the, the, the digital strategy helps uh, accelerate that as well, because if you don't see somebody handing it out on the street, you can always go online, register for a free pack, and we'll send it to you. And then if you like it, you know, give us your feedback, and by all means, you can always come in and buy it there. So I think overall it's been tremendous. So we're obviously in Canada, mm -hmm. and Canadians are loving TAD. But we don't got it in Canada yet. Not yet. Any updates on when we could potentially expect TAT in Canada? So in Canada, TAT would still be regulated under the Cannabis Act. So um, with the partnership we did with CLC, we're actually working with Health Canada now, going back and forth. Great. Uh, to make sure that you know we're compliant with the laws and uh, that we'd be able to sell TAT uh, in the country. So I think hopefully we'll have some updates there soon. Great. Now, one of the key catalysts for any company that's publicly traded is revenue growth. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the sales that are coming in? I know you can't say exact numbers, but can we anticipate some, some, some numbers soon from, from TAP? Look, I think if I were to look at it from an annual standpoint, I'd say sort of for our first year, we'll easily be in the seven figures. I think by year two, we'll easily be in the eight figures, and by year three, we'll definitely be in the nine, if not more. Wow. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, I love that. Yeah. Okay, so because as you start getting your feet underneath you in the beginning, right? I mean, there's, a, there's a bit of trial and error. You're going to try a couple of yep. things. Some things are going to work. Some things are not going to work. It helps you build out your business model, because there's no ubiquitous business model that works for everything, right? Even coming from tobacco, there's certain things that work in tobacco that you have to do a little differently, like sponsoring Floyd Mayweather, right? Yeah. You wouldn't do that in tobacco, but we can and we did. So I mean, you, you do a couple of these things and you really figure out the pieces that work well. Um, obviously, it takes a bit of time in the beginning to build out the human capital infrastructure and, and hiring the right people and bringing the right people on board. And then once you have that in place, scaling happens very quickly. So we're at the point now where we're starting to build out a lot of the infrastructure to support sales throughout the U.S. and obviously, you know, build out infrastructure to start supporting the incoming sales that are going to be happening in Europe, right? It's a big operation. And as those things start to come, I think that they just keep snowballing and snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. You know, again, I kind of take a look at the quick math. I mean, 100,000 smokers would be about $100 million in revenue. Okay? Okay. There's 35 million smokers in America. If I can't find 100,000 smokers in a pool of 35 million in America... You shouldn't be in the business. No. <laughs> but then, on top of that, now I'm going to have Europe as well. So can I find 100,000 smokers between the U.S. and Europe? Yes, absolutely you can. And, I, and I'm giving myself two to three years to do that. I think we could probably do it a little sooner, but you know, a little. And, and I'm on the be, side of uh, conservatism a bit. And you're going to be 50% of the price of all the competitors. Seems like a win-win situation. Yeah. So let's say you're a shareholder, and we've got shareholders that watch Rich TV Live and the Love Tat literally all over the world, a lot in Europe. What do they have to look forward to over the next six months here in 2021? Well, I think uh, we'll definitely be looking at establishing that toehold position in Europe and then expanding more so throughout the continent. Uh, we'll obviously be adding a lot more states within the U.S. as we build out uh, a very robust sales infrastructure. Well, again, alongside Crossmark, it just kind of helps work symbiotically uh, to get this thing rolling very, very quickly. And I'm hopeful that, you know, uh, assuming it all goes well, it will definitely be on the NASDAQ too. So I think we've got a very exciting uh, next couple of quarters ahead of us. So one of the questions that I've been getting is, where is TAC going to be in five years? Can you, do you have a crystal ball? Can you say, okay, you know what? This is year one, mm -hmm. four years from now. What does TAC look like? Well, I th definitely think we're in multiple countries. Um, I think within four years, we're 
easily throughout North America, probably getting into South America, definitely across all of Europe, um, establishing appropriate toeholds within Asia, and then looking into Africa and Australia. You know, obviously wherever the product is otherwise legal and, and have the ability to sell, I think within five years it can pretty much be everywhere. Wow. Five years you guys will be all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. If there was one thing you want the shareholders that are watching, maybe someone that's thinking about buying the stock, maybe someone's a current existing shareholder, to know, what would it be? I think that we're still very early on in our growth. I think we've come an extraordinarily long way in a very short period of time. But there is a mountain in front of us that we're all able to climb. And I think that you know, within a very short period of time, we'll be significantly bigger than we are now. Wow. Well, I'm excited. We've been here for a year sharing the journey, telling your story, and it's been an incredible one. Uh, you were one of the first big hires in the company, and everywhere I go, everyone says, we're so impressed with Senti. We're so impressed with Senti. So uh, congratulations for all your success so far. Thank you. And I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. For those of you guys that are watching, if you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. And remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for information education purposes. Do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about here at Rich TV Live. In saying that, TAT Global Alternatives has been one of our favorite stocks. It's been one of our best performing stocks and companies over the last year. Sethi's done a fantastic job. And thank you for joining us today, Sethi. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure, and thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. This is Rich from Rich TV Live with Seti Cosparella, CEO of TAT Global Alternatives, saying have a nice day.